Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we are checking out a brand new trailer for Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. Now, this is promising to be the first gameplay trailer of a game which is going to show us actual in game footage running rather than just like teasers of cartoons and stuff. So, this is really, really exciting, guys. We're getting our first look at Chapter 3 gameplay, and we're going to be watching that, reacting to it in this video, and then doing a full breakdown thereafter, shot by shot, going through everything in this new trailer. Before I get into that, guys I do want to speak about a statement released today by Mob Entertainment the creators of Poppy Playtime where they talk about a delay for the game but I'm going to read you their statement so we can go through that first before we watch the trailer and just kind of get a sense of what's happening with Poppy Playtime at the moment. So they say hello everyone today we've made the unfortunate decision to delay Poppy Playtime chapter 3 several additional weeks into 2024. We realise this news may be disappointing, and this was a tough decision for us to make. We hope you can accept our apologies. We've made this decision to give us enough time to release Chapter 3 at the quality we're striving for. Simply put, the game is not ready yet. Our developers have been putting in extraordinary efforts to give you the best possible experience we can deliver. Chapter 3 is going to be the biggest, highest quality instalment to Poppy Playtime yet, and we cannot wait for you guys to enjoy it. We understand the emotional investment you've made in our game, and we do not take that support for granted. Your enthusiasm and passion are what drive us to continue the creation of this project we've poured so much into. Thank you for your unwavering support, understanding and patience. Your excitement fuels our commitment to excellence, and we cannot wait for you to experience the final product. Until then, we've put together this gameplay trailer to finally show the world a small snippet of the incredible work our team has been doing here. We hope you enjoy it. Sincerely, Zach and Seth Ballinger. So there we go guys, Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 is being delayed into 2024 by a few weeks, which I imagine means January, February time. Basically with this statement they're just saying that the game's pretty much finished, but it's still got a few issues that they need to iron out ahead of release. And I really applaud them for doing that because honestly I do want to check out this game in its best possible state at launch. They've put in about a year and a half of work at this point and yeah I don't want it to release kind of broken or buggy or glitchy so I'd rather it comes out and it's basically the best it can be which seems to be what's happening here. So with that said guys we're going to be diving now into chapter 3. We're going to be checking out the new trailer and basically seeing what this new gameplay trailer has in store for us. So sit back, relax, and let's check out the Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 gameplay trailer. Okay, so it's starting out the same as usual with a cartoon, the Smiling Critters cartoon. Oh, but it's, it's coming out of a TV, guys. This is new. A Playtime TV. Emergency alert system. Effective 8th of the 8th of 1995, Playtime Company issues Workforce Danger Alert. Ooh, something went down at the company. The following message is for all Playtime Company employees. Have you heard the news? Oh my god, this looks insane already. What the heck, a mansion? Ooh, this must be where the orphans were kept. The gas mask. There's the smiling critters, or at least the plushy versions. These children have suffered. Ooh. The prototype is his god. And this is what he does to heretics. Oh man, yes, yeah, a catnap, sir. What's happening down here is bigger than all of us. I need There's you. Oh my god, look at that huggy guys, that nightmare huggy. You can get revenge on those monsters who tortured you. Hey, it's Kissy! Is that Kissy Missy? We're coming! Just Oh, the gas mask on! Prototype has to die. For this. For everything. Oh my god, there's one of the smiling critters. What the heck? And there's Catnap. Oh my god, Catnap is huge! Catnap is massive, guys. Looking like Slender Man. That was so cool. We had Poppy in there. What the heck? We had Kissy Missy. That was crazy. That showed like quite a lot of gameplay actually. All right, guys. Well, that trailer showed a whole bunch of stuff. I was trying to put it together as I was watching it. We are going to be going through this trailer now, breaking it down, listening to um, basically what was said in that trailer a bit more clearly there and uh, analyzing it. But before we do the breakdown portion of this video, just kind of want to say that 
that looked like really, really like a huge jump over chapter two, didn't it? Like visually it looked better. Um, it has loads of different kind of like, um, loads of different mascots, like living mascots within the uh, playtime facility there. And yeah, just like lots of new environments. I think we saw a new power as well, but I have to go back and check that. You can definitely see why it's taking them so long to make this, especially as they say this is the biggest chapter yet. But let's actually go back through that trailer, let's piece it together shot by shot, and what we can see when we take a look at the finer details. Okay, so at the very start of the trailer, we have this message which appears on a Playtime TV, and it says, Emergency Alert System Effective 8th of the 8th, 1995, the Playtime Company issues a Workforce Danger Alert. So this seems to suggest that when all hell broke loose at the facility, it happened on the 8th of August, 1995. So that's essentially when everything went wrong at the facility, when all these mascots escaped containment and started terrorising the place. It was on the 8th of August, 1995, so we have a date for like the point of origin of the story way back when, which is interesting. The following message is for all Playtime Company employees. And the emergency voiceover says this is for all Playtime Co. employees, so this is a message broadcast out to everybody at the facility at the time, basically saying, you know, there's been an incident, you probably need to escape the facility now, it's probably not a safe place to be anymore. And then we have this little message that says, have you heard the news pop up? These kind of periodically appear throughout the trailer, and we'll read them as they, uh, as they appear. Now the first shot we get is of this like, big mansion, now I think this is probably the orphanage where the children slept. This is probably the area of the facility where after doing the tests during the day in the game station area, the orphans would come back to stay, they would go to school, you know, all this other stuff, and they would eventually go to sleep in the dorm rooms, which we see a little later. We can see there's this like googly eyed mailbox type thing outside the main like um, building, which I guess is where maybe the letters from the parents would go, you know, the Playtime Co employees that had adopted these children, maybe they could send letters to the children they'd adopted staying in this place. We can also see there's some like little places where the children would sit outside and it was basically like a virtual home I guess, like a fake home. You can see all around there's like these mountains and clouds but it's all like scenery. So they try to make it seem as real as possible like this is a place that exists outside for the children so they would feel like they are seeing a bit of the outside world but of course they're actually just languishing in the depths of this facility still. And at the very end of this shot we actually hear Poppy herself and she says find the flower. So it seems the poppy flower is going to be very, very important. If you remember back to the start of the game, guys, and um, we had that message and it had the poppy flower on that. And we've had some like theories that the poppy flower was what was used in the process of bringing these creations to life. Putting the human souls into these toys, then bringing them to life with the poppy flower in some form. Um, we've heard that before, the words of Elliot Ludwig in his research notes where he was trying out on rats. It seems the poppy flower is key to the story in some way. Then we have the shot of the dormitory where the children would sleep within this kind of mansion that we see from the outside. We're now inside it, we can see that the place has like all these holes in the floor and ceiling, perhaps holes that the um, critters will emerge from, especially Catnap, to chase us about the place. It's completely wrecked, there's like debris all over the floor, there's like broken up toys, the beds are all smashed up. It seems like something pretty crazy went down here, something wrecked the entire orphanage. And then the next shot we finally see the gas mask, now this is obviously where we first discover the gas mask and the gas mask is going to be a key kind of accessory that we can wear during this chapter. It's going to protect us from that gas that comes from catnap that can put us to sleep of course and give us those horrible nightmares we've heard about. So it seems like in order to navigate this facility we are going to have to wear this gas mask. We can actually see some of the red gas to the, um, the left of the image, although I think they're calling it smoke not gas. But you can see some of it there kind of forming and it seems like that area on the left is an area we're going to have to go into which has this kind of red smoke so we're going to have to wear the gas mask to go through that and navigate that. Then we see this shot of all the smiling critters. These are the critters in their plushy form. These were the ones that were sold to the outside world that we heard about where you put a scent inside their pouch, their zippable pouch on the front there and they put the children to sleep with a calming scent. Of course, the version of these critters we're going to be meeting inside the facility are not going to be this friendly and nice looking. They're going to be kind of like twisted forms of these originally cute plushies. As we've seen with Huggy, as we've seen with Mommy, they always have a twisted form within the game world and these are going to be no different. Behind them, you can also see these other 
like little toys kind of strung up, kind of like we saw in chapter one of the game. And then all around you can see these colourful like foam bricks. It seems like this area is taking place within the play care which we've heard lots about. The play zone where the orphans would come to just play and relax. It says these children have suffered in the next message. Of course referring to all the orphans that were experimented on. Then we hear this mystery man sort of speaking to us through a recording. I'm not sure who this character actually is, but whoever he is, he seems to be involved in these experiments or at least have knowledge of them, perhaps some kind of whistleblower at the company. That thing, Catman, the prototype is his god, and this is what he does to heretics. But he basically says Catnap worships a prototype and this is what he does to heretics, and then it shows this one character like strung up, it almost seems like this character that's strung up is one of the smiling critters, but I can't quite make out exactly which one. It could be the rabbit-like character. It's basically being tortured by Catnap for defying him. So it seems to suggest that some of the toys in Chapter 3 are going to be allies to our character and try and help us, defying the prototype and defying Catnap and therefore being punished. Before that shot, we see this kind of um, mangled sculpture that's made up from all of these dead toys. We can see even a human skeleton with a hard hat on coming out of the uh, pugger pillar, the PJ pugger pillar mouth there, which is pretty horrific. And it seems like this sculpture has been made up from many once living toys. We see a Huggy Wuggy in there, we see a Bunzo Bunny, we can see many of the smiling critters also molded into this wirework frame. It's also made from part machine, and it seems like Catnap has basically constructed this out of all the different toys that sort of defied him, or at least the toys that were like below him in the pecking order. The more vulnerable toys who basically couldn't assist him in taking over the facility. Of course we know Catnap holds the consciousness of a child called Theodore Gramble, who basically tried to escape the facility and was assisted by the prototype but now actually lives on inside Catnap after suffering a terrible accident. If you guys want to find out the full story of Theo, you can check out my videos surrounding the ARG. I'll link those at the end of this one. But because of that, Catnap is tied to the prototype. He worships the prototype because the prototype was the one person or the one thing at the facility that tried to help him escape when he was a child there. So he has this special bond with the prototype and now tries to assist him in the ruins of this facility. Then we have a message which says these children grow hungry, which means that like obviously the children that now live on within these toys are growing hungry because they've been here for so long. That's probably why they're hunting our character now because they're just starving in this place. It's pretty dark if you think about it, like these children trapped inside these toys just left to starve in the ruins of a Playtime Co factory. And uh, of course we enter and they're all ravenous now chasing us down trying to uh, feed themselves because they've just been down here for so long. What's happening down here is bigger than all of us. I need you. So we can get revenge on those monsters who've tortured you. Who've tortured us. Then we have Poppy saying that she needs our help so that we can get revenge on the monsters that have tortured us and tortured everyone else at the facility. So it seems like Poppy's plan is basically a plan of vengeance. Now I don't know when she says monsters if she is actually referring to the toys or if she's referring to actually like the scientists of the place because of course the scientists were the real bad guys. They were the ones doing all these experiments on the orphan children including I must imagine Poppy. So I think she's actually referring to the scientists here. Maybe she's trying to get us to expose the secrets of the facility to the outside world and the fact that she refers to us as one of the people tortured by these monsters makes me think that perhaps our character was once wronged as well while working at the facility. We do know that we were once a member of Playtime Co as Mommy Longlegs refers to us in Chapter 2 but perhaps we were once wronged by the scientists, perhaps something happened to us as well and um, we're going to find out what that something is in Chapter 3. We'll have to wait and see though. While Poppy's audio is playing there, we also see some shots of the grab pack and a new ability with a new hand. You can see that this new hand can be swapped at any point, so we can switch it on the fly. And basically what it does, as we had theorised before guys, you slap it down on these purple plates and you can actually spring yourself higher to kind of cross gaps. So it's an ability that lets us leap around the areas and traverse kind of like pitfalls and stuff like that. 
We also see this new like ability with the uh, grab pack as well, where it seems to be tethering like lots of different power points together rather than having to connect it with the like arms. It actually zaps them together, which seems to be a new ability. So we can kind of shoot from point to point instead. In the next shot, we see this TV with this really horrifying Huggy Wuggy face on it. It looks even more horrifying than the Huggy we ran into in Chapter 1, so I'm not sure what's going on here, but perhaps there were different experiments, like failed experiments, that kind of like now exist within the depths of this facility. Of course, we're going deeper and deeper chapter by chapter. So in the depths of this place, the further down we get, we're probably going to run into some of the failed experiments. And this may be one of them we're seeing on the TV, a horrifying version of Huggy Wuggy. Then the next shot's quite weird, guys, because we've got Poppy and she seems to be sat on Kissy Missy who is like carrying us through the facility. So basically this seems to be a shot looking up from the ground towards the ceiling. As we can see there's like pipes connecting to the ceiling and undergrowth coming down from the ceiling. And it seems like Kissy is like carrying us about, essentially helping us. So this does seem to confirm that at least for part of Chapter 3, Kitty is going to be a friendly character as we had previously theorized. But at least for some of the runtime of Chapter 3, we are going to be helped by Kissy and she is going to be traveling with us and Poppy, trying to get us from point A to B at a certain point in the chapter. And it looks really cool. I like this shot, just like being carried about by Kissy and having Poppy as a little companion as well. We have the next message which says the hour of joy arrives. We've heard plenty about the hour of joy. That seems to be the hour in which uh, Catnap releases that smoke, that sleeping smoke, sending everyone into fits of hysterics and then into a deep sleep. Then we see the playtime phone, which seems to be a point of contact within the facility. Now we've seen this phone before in Project Playtime, of course. You can pick it up there, but it didn't actually do anything in that game. I don't know what we'll be doing with it, but my hunch is that that voice we heard previously in the trailer is going to be someone we speak to on this phone, someone else who's hiding in the facility trying to survive in the aftermath of what went down in 95. So they may have been down here for quite some time and they'll be talking to us on this phone. That thing, Catman, the prototype is his god. Then we have a shot where we put on the gas mask, as you can see we're traveling through the smoke, and we hear Poppy say, we're coming, just hold on. We're coming, just hold on! So it seems like Kissy and Poppy lose us at some point, we fall down into the depths, and they have to reunite with us later in the chapter, and we have to survive on our own. And then we have Poppy saying one final thing, which is the prototype has to die for this, for everything. Prototype has to die for this for everything. So it seems like the prototype is tied to all of the different like toys that live in the facility. Once we take out the prototype, it's kind of like a hive mind it seems. Maybe the other toys will shut down and the children will finally be at peace. So the prototype might be the thing tying everyone together, keeping everyone going and everyone alive through like a hive mind type connection. We have heard of course from like notes from different characters like Leif Pierre that the um, prototype was basically paired with each of the toys once they were brought to life. So it seems like the prototype was definitely an intrinsic part of the experiments. So in some way, by taking care of that character, we're going to free the others potentially and put their souls to rest. Not entirely sure how it's going to work, guys, but that's my read on this kind of um, line that comes from Poppy in the trailer. And then we have this shot of Dog Day, the dog character, crawling out from this tunnel in the play care. He seems to be chasing us, so it seems like some of the smiling critters are going to be after us. It's not just going to be Catnap. Perhaps in the play care we'll have all of the different smiling critters after us. Although I think maybe some of them could be friendly as well, because of course some of them may be heretics, as they're known, who work against Catnap. We'll have to wait and see, but Dog Day here certainly seems to be uh, a hostile enemy that is chasing us about. The final shot shows us jumping across this gap and into a vent and we can see something scratched on the wall and I can make it out barely. It says, and is those who believe. I don't really know what that means guys, but it's an interesting observation there. And then the final shot, of course, we see Catnap for the first time. He's not fully shown, he's still in silhouette here, but he seems to be in a, the schoolhouse environment in a hallway here, red lighting, very ominous. And he's like super tall, he's got really long arms, really long legs, a really long tail, and I imagine his neck's able to stretch really far as well. Basically, he's a very elastic-y, stretchy character that can shrink down and grow in size, 
It looks very ominous. As you can see here, he's pretty much as tall as the ceiling. So he can grow very, very big when he wants to. And definitely seeing this thing chasing us and emerge from the darkness is going to be terrifying. So I'm pretty sure chapter 3 is going to be the scariest yet by far. Because this thing already looks horrible. But there we go guys, that is a chapter 3 trailer, that's my full analysis of the trailer. And also we had the message of the delay as well, the game is now coming in early 2024. So we will be doing a full playthrough on the channel when it releases, as well as a story explain video, a look at all the different monsters, a secrets video, and all that other good stuff you love on the channel. So I can't wait to share that with you guys, hopefully you'll join me for my playthrough and my other content, and we'll have a great time when that launches. But yeah, that was the trailer. I will leave a link down below so you can go and check it out on the official Mob Entertainment YouTube channel. I thought it was an amazing looking trailer. I'm really, really excited for Chapter 3 now. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are too. With that said, this has been a quite a long video, I think, and I'm going to have to edit this down now. So I hope you did enjoy it today. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you can leave a like, comments down below, and of course, subscribe for more videos just like this one. And I will see you all on the next one.